I didn't realize this, but the Redmi Pad is now available in the United States. It's a little confusing on which one to pick. There's so many different variations. Apparently some have three gigabytes of RAM with only 64 gigabytes of storage. Then there's a six gigabyte version with 128. This is the Wi-Fi only version. I just went with the four gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage because it would be shipped a little bit faster than the others. Price for this model was about $250. I'll leave a link with pricing and more information down below. <laughs> It's got a 10.61 inch display, also has 90 hertz refresh rate, 2000 by 1200 resolution, 400 nits brightness, also has an 8000 milliamp hour battery, also has 18 watt fast charging, MediaTek Helio G99 processor, it's got an eight megapixel camera on the front and back, plus it has a quad speaker setup with Dolby Atmos, has Android 12 with MIUI 13. Some of the specs here, USB wall adapter is included, USB-A to USB-C charging cable, micro SD card removal tool, and then quick start guide warranty card. Okay, this actually looks really nice in person. You've got aluminum here on the back, pretty thin and lightweight as well. I kind of like how they're doing the camera on the back as well. You've also got a little Redmi logo there on the back. I'm kind of liking the flat edges on this. Volume rocker, micro SD card slot there on the right hand side. You've got speakers on both sides with Dolby Atmos, USB-C charging there on the bottom. For being a budget device, this feels more premium than what it actually is. Might be kind of hard to tell in this video, but the screen itself kind of sticks up quite a ways, almost on its own layer. It also has dual band Wi-Fi, so you got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. You've also got the front facing camera there on the long edge. Now this tablet's a little bit skinnier as you can see. Probably gonna be some people that can use this just one handed. And the nice thing about this, you're gonna get Google Play on here. No need to import from another country and then figure out how to install it later. During setup, you've got screen lock and face unlock. You can do pattern, pin, or password. Looks like it's gonna be on gestures from the start, but I'm sure you can change that in the navigation settings. Interesting thing about this wallpaper, it looks almost identical to what I have on one of my Lenovo tablets. First thing you'll probably want to do is go into the home screen settings and change it from classic to with app drawer. That way it's just easier to access all of your apps. It's going to be more like Samsung or other tablets out there. Interesting thing you'll notice if you swipe over on the right hand side, looks like the control center off an iPad. To be honest though, looks good on here. You've got most of your shortcuts that you would want like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, screen brightness, audio, airplane mode, auto brightness, mute, screenshot, lock orientation, lock screen, screen recorder, Google Pay, DND, battery saver, screencast, me share, floating windows, hotspot, nearby share, and Dolby Atmos. Looks like we've got a software update. Might as well go ahead and do that. Also has 18 watt fast charging. Check out the animation here when it's charging. It looks pretty nice actually. Looks like it's got 105 gigabytes available of the 128. If you go into system navigation, you can change this from gestures to buttons. Kind of curious to see what those look like. Okay, pretty standard here for the most part. Nice thing is, looks like you've got button shortcuts where you can long press the home button for the Google Assistant. And there's several others where it gives you options of what to do when you long press on that button. You can see here when you go to recent apps, you've got clear all up at the top instead of on the bottom where it usually is. Looks like you can do floating window for any of these apps listed as well. And then move it around as you like. Then just swipe up to get rid of it. Swipe left of the home screen for Google Discover, Newsfeed. Now that we changed the home screen settings, you can swipe up or hit this little arrow to see all the pre-installed apps. Looks like mostly the ones from Google and a couple others that I probably would install anyways, like Netflix. You've got several different categories along the top, or you can just keep it on all to see all apps and then just swipe down. You'll notice along the top is recent apps and then search down here at the bottom. And speaking of Netflix, this is Widevine L1, which means you're gonna get full HD playback resolution. Not bad for what's considered a more budget or affordable tablet. You can also watch YouTube videos up to 1440p resolution. Not sure if that's a device restriction that you can't go up to 4K or if YouTube just updated their app recently. I'm not sure, I would have to test other devices now. In settings, if you look at wallpaper, 
wallpaper. They do have some other options here. Uh, looks like 24 pre-installed. You've also got light mode and dark mode in here. Plus you can schedule dark mode on here as well. That way it changes sort of like on an iPad or on a Mac. You can also adjust the refresh rate if you want 60 hertz or 90 hertz. Even though you have what looks like the control center over here on the right hand side, you can still just swipe down over here for notifications. You'll also notice sort of looks like a dock down here or similar to an iPad with your main apps and recent apps as well. Now just doing some Geekbench testing on this, scores are actually really similar, maybe slightly better than on the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. A little bit better than the Galaxy Tab A8, but just moving around the software on here, it actually feels really snappy. Kind of reminds me of how Nokia does on the T20 where there's not a lot of animations or it's just something they're doing in the software that just makes it feel a little bit faster, a little bit snappier than some of the competition. You are going to get high frame rates, HD graphics on games like PUBG Mobile and everything plays fairly smooth on here for the most part. But to me, the graphics don't look quite as good as on some more premium tablets that I've tested. And it seems like graphics in the distance take a little bit longer to load. I didn't notice any overheating or glitches during my testing, so that's good to see. And I think most people are going to enjoy gaming on here as long as you realize this is not a high performance premium tablet, but for the price it does a nice job at playing some of the more popular games like Apex Legends Mobile and Asphalt 9 plus the screen quality appears to have good enough resolution and decent viewing angles to compete against other tablets in this category like the Galaxy Tab A8 and this one doesn't have screen bleed issues like on my Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. This tablet also appears to have above average battery life, lasting about nine hours in my battery drain test, which is really good considering there's some tablets out there that are more expensive and have only lasted five and a half or six hours in that same test. Nice thing is you've got speakers on both sides with Dolby Atmos, so the speakers are gonna be nice and loud and pretty well balanced since they're on both sides. Here's a quick audio test just to give you an idea of what to expect. In the camera app, you can scan documents. You've got video, photo. For video recording, you can go up to 1080p resolution, 30 frames per second. You've got night, and then you've got short video. Super fast shutter speed here for the photos. The camera quality on here actually looks pretty decent. Here's a few samples of photo and video just to give you an idea of what to expect on here. Now the photo and video quality, just from my time testing, sort of what you would expect for a tablet in this price range. Not gonna be the best out there, but it's actually pretty decent, maybe a little better than I was expecting. I may have to do some comparisons with this tablet and some others that I've got just to see how it stacks up. But so far, I'm pretty impressed by what you get for the money and just how snappy the tablet feels moving around the software, even though this is more of a budget or entry-level tablet. I'll definitely be comparing this to some others that I've got, so you'll wanna look out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.